Hello, and welcome to a bonus episode of the Physique Development Podcast. This show is a question and answer based show where we take questions we have been asked by our listeners and answer them through our industry experience as coaches and from our own professional perspectives. But today we'll be doing things a little bit differently. The podcast is normally three co owners, Alex, Austin, and Sue, but as a company, we have other coaches on staff. Today, I, Coach Sue, am joined by Mackenzie Montana. Hey, everyone, I'm Mackenzie. You'll be hearing from Mackenzie, getting to know who she is, and you will see why she completely embodies what it is to be a physique development coach. We'll dive into her life, what got her into fitness, and a topic that she has chosen, as we still want this to be an education-based podcast. And this will be all about working a corporate job and still being able to reach your goals, as well as talking about investing in yourself. Without further ado, let's hear from Mackenzie. Mackenzie, why don't you tell us about yourself and who you are? Okay, so I could talk for hours about myself, but I won't. Um, But I grew up an athlete my whole life. Um, I grew up in Louisville, Kentucky, and I went to college to play volleyball, um, where I excelled greatly, but also um, have just been able to take my competitiveness and my discipline from volleyball and sports in general and just apply it to my everyday life. Um, I have a sister and a father and my mother passed away when I was 18. Um, and that is something that has really shaped me and just formed the woman that I am today and, and the independence that I do have. Um, but I did go to Lindsay Wilson. Like I said, I graduated with a communication degree. Um, and I always knew that I loved fitness. I loved working out. Um, but I never knew what I d- wanted to do after college. And I was just kind of like, I graduated. So now what? Um, I got into corporate America at a healthcare company. Um, I started as like a guest relations admissions person at a nursing home. And then I turned to working at the actual home office and uh, recruiting. I got laid off in May because of COVID. And that's when I just decided to go dive headfirst into fitness and follow my passion and become a coach. And because I always knew that I wanted to, I was always helping people out. But I never was like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a fitness coach and whatnot. So here I am today. Yeah. And we are very thankful for that unfortunate push that COVID did, but it was a good push. Uh, because uh, as I talked about in her post that we posted on the physique development Instagram, she's been a physique development client for two years now, and she's competed and gone through a reverse, and she's actually gearing up to go into her next competitive season, yeah. which is very exciting. Um, but it was something that I saw so much promise in her, and I knew how much she loved fitness, and uh, she just never seemed excited about her job. It was just she was going to her job. So it was something that, even though it was very sad, when she was like, I got laid off. It was in a very exciting way because I knew how much she was capable of. And it's so cool that that moment has now transpired into this moment of bringing you on board as a physique development coach. Yeah, I always, I remember I called or texted Sue and Alex and I was like, hey, lost my job. And both of them were like, Great. Now you can go full time <laughs> fitness. I'm like, what? Great. You lost your job. Yeah. We're happy for you. But yeah, I'm very thankful for PD. It was kind of my ground and my foundation in that time when I was just searching for what to do next. Um, and then just being able to have people like Sue, Alex, and Austin around to be like, hey, what is this like? Can I shadow you for a day? Um, things like that. And it just turned out and here we are. And I'm so thankful for the opportunity. And I just can't wait to see what it has in store and just to keep growing in myself and as a company as well. Yeah, I love it. She's going to you guys are going to absolutely love once any of you guys inquire with her and get to know her as a coach and a human. Um, I've seen the impact that she's made on her clients already. And so I'm very excited for her to take on some PD clients and be a part of our team here. So she did also while she was in college, She taught group fitness classes and did personal training in her last semester, as well as being a volleyball player. So why don't you go ahead and talk a little bit on what your experience was while you were teaching those classes. And then why don't you also tell us kind of your background as you got into lifting, as you transitioned out of being that athlete that you always were in volleyball, but now having to switch gears into something else. Yeah, so I first started lifting when I was a freshman in in college, like seriously lifting. Um, I met like a basketball player that was a little bit older than me. And he was like, yeah, just come work out with me one day. I was like, okay. And so then I would literally practice volleyball, go work out 
and then like sleep like every day. And I was just running myself into the ground. But then I had my first spring of volleyball and that's when you do most of the lifting. And I was like, wow, I'm a weak baby. So let me, let me go back into the gym and figure out what I'm going to do. Um, and then it just, I was always in our wellness center is what we called it. And the wellness center director approached me and was like, Hey, everyone wants to know what you do. Like, do you do anything with fitness? And I had helped a couple people before and I was like, no, not really. Um, but I had a girl approach me and she was like, I will, I will pay you, you know, and I was like, no, you don't have to do that. I'll do it on my free time. Um, and so I trained her one-on-one and she actually became a personal trainer a couple years later, which was really cool to see. Um, and then I trained the fitness classes as well. So I had three classes at night. So I would do class practice and then go to the gym <laughs> for three hours. Um, but I loved it. The women there were amazing. And we did anything from circuits to like Tabata, um, and just different styles. And I would kind of, while we're there, let them ask me questions about nutrition and stuff. Um, just because I had been counting macros, I did all my own research. Um, and, and it's funny because I say I did all my own research, but my research was following Sue on Instagram <laughs> and watching her YouTube. Um, and, and just, and, and fits bows quote unquote like that. I just, kind of just dug into what it meant. And now that I look back, I was on the right track, but I wasn't doing it correctly. So I'm just thankful for knowing how to train now and how to properly nourish my body. Um, But without those experiences, I would have never known that I truly loved fitness the way that I did. Um, And that's where my love for competing started. But I knew I couldn't compete until I stopped playing volleyball because it was just impossible (laughs) yeah as you can tell she had a busy schedule and as you can also tell she's not very motivated individual she doesn't take on too much or anything like that um but that is something um and I'll kind of do a sidestep and tell a funny background about Mackenzie and I uh so I started my fitness Instagram while I was in college I was um I did sports all through middle school high school and I wanted to do sports in college and I ended up going for academics. And so it just wasn't in the cards for me to do any kind of sport in college. I want to do pole vault. I threw out my back senior year of high school. And so going into college, I was like, I have hated my body for such a long time. And now I can kind of reinvent myself. And so I took on doing fitness. But at the time I was drinking too much alcohol, trying to live that college life, but still going to the gym very consistently. But as you might know, I did not get the results that I wanted. (laughs) So, <laughs> I know it's a weird concept. Um, so then once I had decided like, Hey, I'm actually going to dedicate to this. I had started my fitness Instagram. I started a separate one from my normal Instagram because I was getting made fun of. And Mackenzie actually started following me like really early on after I had started my Instagram. Like I don't even know how soon after I started it. But. Yeah, it was probably a couple of weeks or maybe even months, but you weren't with my protein yet. So it was that, very, yeah, very early. early. <laughs> yeah. So that was, um, I mean, how many years ago was that? 2015. Yeah. Probably. Five yeah. or so years ago. And, um, at the time she would like retweet my tweets and like comment on my Instagram posts and comment on my YouTube channel. And at that time I was pretty consistent with YouTube because I didn't have friends. So it was easy to be consistent you with YouTube. You vlog miss one time. Yeah. I was like, wow. I did like so every day it. leading up to Christmas. So now I don't remember the last time I produced a YouTube video, but that's beside the point. Um, and it's so funny because at the time, like I recognized her name because she was commenting and retweeting and we had had conversations and all of that, but I didn't realize to the extent of how closely she followed me or what that looked like on her side. And now that we've become friends, it is funny because like time hop will pop up and be like three years ago, four years ago, and it'll be Mackenzie like quote tweeting something (laughs) of mine or like uh, saying like, you need to go watch this video of Sue Gaines or Sue's getting cardio yeah like that. <laughs> it brings me brings a huge smile to my face but um so she started following me and she actually came to lexington i went to uk um and i don't remember if we ended up meeting up mm-hmm. while we were there no i don't think you were there i know i met with gabby, gabby yeah um and then i just was like, oh, I'm going to go to your show in Dayton. Yeah. So she (laughs) showed up at my second show that I ever did. um, And she had donuts with her. And she was like, I'm Mackenzie. And I was like, hi. (laughs) Hello, I'm a creeper. (laughs) And I 
I like said something about this uh, pop tart donut, and she like brought that donut. It was so special, and that's like one of our first pictures together. Um, and one of like five the after all these pictures. years, so we have like no pictures <laughs> together. Um, but she came to my show, and I vividly remember her just standing there and being like, "Sue, guess what?" And I was like, "What? I don't know you." <laughs> I'm yeah. just kidding. Like, who are you? I was like, "What is it?" Like. What are you talking about? She was like, I'm in off season for my first show. Yeah. And I could just see the joy radiating from her and how excited she was. And I just remember getting so excited from her excitement of just like that secondhand excitement of seeing um, how much she had thought about this and wanted to devote herself to that. So from there, let's go ahead and talk about um, your coaching experience leading up to joining in with physique development and what that looked like going into your first prep as well. Yeah, so I started with a coach um, right out of college, so May 2018 when I graduated, um, and I loved every experience with him. He was amazing, um, and he still is amazing, and I just, just met Brandon, so my boyfriend Brandon, I met him um, right after I cut for the first time. And I was like, you know what, I kind of want to enjoy quote unquote balance in life, which meant I didn't want to have hold myself accountable and not have to answer to anybody. So I stopped working with him. Um, and then I guess it was maybe six or seven months later, I suppose. Um, I reached out to Alex and I had met Sue and Alex at West LSE Westport and multiple times. Um, right after they got married, they moved to Louisville and I was just like, Oh my gosh, I love them both. Like they're (laughs) great people. Um, and so I inquired with Alex and I was like, I want to prep. And he was like, okay, let's do it. And so then started our 28 week prep and it was very hard. Um, but what I think just made me grow even more was the reverse and just knowing that Alex was invested in me. Sue uh, taught me how to pose. Like it was so sad, but we, you know, I would, she taught me how to pose. She checked on me all the time. She was there for my show. And it was just, I knew I wanted to be a part of something much bigger. And that's what PD was for me. And then being laid off and all of that, I was just like, okay, I can go for this. This is what I want to do. And I always talked about like, I want to do something in fitness. I just don't know what. Um, And I wasn't sure like, what it looked like for me. But as, as I continue to progress and even from May, I've grown so much as a coach and just learned. And the fact that I'm just honored to be on PD staff now, because I know how much impact they've had on me. So the fact that I get to have that impact on other people is just, it is what keeps me going and what I love to wake up four in the morning. So they're getting near my feelings. Um, But something else I want to touch on just within coaching is she also is a coach for the Fit by Katie app. And I think that that was something that really taught you and showed you what you wanted to do with your future. So if you want to talk on that a little bit, kind of what that app looked like and what you wanted past that, just to give a little bit of a background for what your passion is within coaching. Yeah, that's a funny story too, in the sense that when I was approached to be, it was kind of like a last minute thing. And I was like, sure, why not? Um, And I knew, again, like I wanted to be in fitness and I loved it. So I was able to be in the first three challenges, which was really cool to be a part of the the rolling out of the coaches. And I remember just how excited everyone everyone was and everyone still is very excited about it. And just having that group of people of like, okay, we're new, but we're going to do this thing. And to uphold Katie's name and Hayden's name and their reputation was, was amazing. And just to be part of that was awesome. Um, and I knew that I wanted more. I knew that I wanted to be more one-on-one and more hands-on with, with the girls because there's only so much you can do in a challenge and it's only eight weeks. And I knew like by week six or week seven, I was like, I'm really changing these girls, these girls lives. And like, I want to help them like more, but it's not, you know, I'm not allowed to do that. Um, And so that's when I decided, like, hey, maybe the challenges were a great start and a great foundation for me. Um, I found my voice as a coach and like kind of my persona and my charisma. And then I was like, you know what, I'm going to try this one on one. And I've fallen in love with it. And I love it so much. It's, it's literally a joy for me to every single day to just be able to know that 
I am investing in women that are investing in me as well. Yeah. And she was doing SBK alongside her corporate job the mm-hmm. whole time. And um, like that was her whole time. She was doing the SBK alongside her corporate job. So we'll dive into corporate life here in a second. But something else I wanted to talk on is with doing the challenges. Um, and if you don't know what the FBK challenges entail or what they look like, they're eight week challenges and you can buy coach or uncoach. And Mackenzie was obviously part of the coach challenge. And she was there to be able to help these girls throughout the challenge for those eight weeks. And like she said, she wanted to do more. So it wasn't that these challenges, there was anything wrong with these challenges or um, she didn't like it. It was just the fact of she knew she wanted more fulfillment out of what she was doing and to have a longer term relationship. Um, So challenges only allow you that eight week relationship. Of course, they can sign back up, but it is a different platform than what Mackenzie personally wanted to do. So I remember her coming to me and just being like, hey, I I love this. I love the opportunity that I've been given, but I want more. And that was something that was just so great for me to hear because I saw so much passion pouring out of her of what she wanted to be able to provide these women with. Um, And that's another reason that we wanted her on staff is because I saw how much she cared. This wasn't just like, oh, let me do as much as I can to get as much money as I can or to do X, Y, and Z. It was, I want to change lives. And as you've heard me talk about either on this podcast or on my social media, the absolute best marketing strategy and the best thing that you can do for your business is to care. If you care about your clients, you care about what you're doing, the sky is the absolute limit. And I don't care how frou-frou that sounds. At the end of the day, any business owner that's listening to this or anyone interested in business, I can tell you as long as you care, there will be success there. And success is measured in so many different ways. So don't just look at it as financial success, although that can, of course, come alongside it. (laughs) Um, But it was something that she had such passion and she just wanted to learn. She wanted to become better. And I I can't tell you as an owner, what that, how hard that is to find. Um, It might be like, oh, there's a million and one coaches, but finding a coach that cares, that wants to learn, that is open to critique um, and open to knowing when they can be better is something that is far and few between. And so when it came to hiring new coaches for physique development, Mackenzie was an easy choice because it was someone who was not only invested in physique development herself because she was using us for coaching and she knew how we coach. She she knew what physique development was about and she had fostered personal relationships with Alex and Austin and I. Um, but then it was something that she was like primed in this place that she had her CPT, she had the experience and now it was just diving deep into the systems and building out that business. And it was something where we had a lot of conversations of like, do you want to do this yourself and build your own business or do you want to be a part of physique development and what does that look like? And her being able to be like, I just want to see this brand grow. And like she just said, she knew what an impact physique development had made on her own life. And she wanted to continue and foster that relationship um, for other girls. And it's been phenomenal to see her coach one-on-one and see these girls like so pleased with their experience and so happy with what she does. Like her birthday was uh, <laughs> last week or I mean, beginning of this week, but when you're listening to this, it was in November. And uh, I had a few of her clients even message me asking if they could send her gifts. And then I was telling her about how cute the messages were. She was like, Oh my gosh, so many of them sent me gifts and sent me all these different things. And I mean, that that's impact. You don't just send a gift to someone random you don't care about. And so it was so cool to see that impact so soon in her journey as a coach um, and to see that blossom. So just wanted to give a little shout out and talk a little bit about her as a coach because I think it's important to touch on. So for the education educational side of things here, I do want her to dive into what it was like to prep while having a nine to five because I think that um, a lot of people listening to this have nine to fives and it's easy to think like, oh, well, people who are their own bosses or X, Y, and Z have it so much easier. It's harder for me and it might be, but you got to choose your heart as to what that looks like because each profession has its own difficulties that you kind of run into. So I think it'll be very beneficial for her to talk about a nine to five corporate life, what that looked like alongside her fitness goals and even touching on a little bit of what that looked like in your off season versus prep. Um, And then also being able to dive into what it's like to invest in yourself. Because like I said, she's 
been a client for two years. And some of you might listen to that and be like, oh my gosh, two years to commit to. But I'm sure when she first signed up, it wasn't like, oh, I'm going to be on for forever or I'm going to be on for this length of time. She was just thinking one foot in front of the other. But I do want her to talk on that a little bit because I think it'll be really beneficial. Yeah, so I'll dive into the investment portion first. Um, so like Sue said, when I first started, I was like, okay, a 28 week prep, a 28 week prep, and I know that I have to reverse after. So then we'll see what happens. Um, when I first invested in myself was right out of college, though, when I first started working with my first coach. Um, and I knew at that point that I was serious about my health and it wasn't just a physical look. Um, it was more so I wanted to be strong. I wanted to learn how to properly nourish my body because I knew what I was doing wasn't correct. Um, like I'm not kidding. I would eat chicken and peppers like for every meal and, <laughs> and be tired. Shocking. <laughs> um, but she was eating the caloric intake of an infant. Yeah, I was not doing and then hours of cardio. I mean, hours on the stairs. And now you, you'll see me post on social media. Like people will ask me, what do you do for cardio? And I incline walk strictly just because I don't do, I don't enjoy anything. Or we'll go on old lady walks yeah. together. <laughs> we'll go on like like an hour long walk and just talk. But that's beside the point. But um, I just remember like I need to learn something about this fitness stuff because there's a there's not a secret. There's a right way to do it, and I wanted to be the best version of myself. And I knew that pouring into me physically and by, with nutrition was going to make me the best version of myself in all aspects of my life. And I know people look at coaching and they're like, I don't have the, the finances for that. And some people really don't. And that's okay. Um, and that's why people put out free content. So I would say absorb as much as you possibly can. Ask questions. Like yeah. <laughs> ask questions. Like I love when people ask me questions, I will give advice to anyone. Um, and, and when you look at pricing, you just think like, okay, I'm investing in my body, the vessel that I live my entire life in and my mind as well. So finding that, that reasoning behind investing in yourself is going to be the best thing for you. And just knowing that, okay, I'm living in this body for the rest of my life. Do I want to feel horrible all the time? Or do I want to feel great and enjoy myself while also living my life? And that doesn't mean you have to be 1000% perfect every single day in your, in your nutrition and your workouts or anything like that. It means that you're caring more about yourself internally. And in turn, usually when you're healthy internally, that reflects on the physicality portion of it, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's like, Yes. Internal yeah. follows the external yeah. or the external follows the internal. Yeah. So then you think about how much do I spend eating out? How much do I spend drinking every weekend? And usually that will cover your cost for coaching <laughs> per month. I promise you it's, it's a, an investment that you won't, you won't regret. I would not take back anything in the past two years that I've gotten um, from myself and from physique development. And I, it's, I will literally say it till I'm blue in the face. It's the best investment you can make in yourself. Um, and it pays off in the end, but you have to play the long game. And that's not what people usually want to do. Um, but I have talked to many of women on the phone that are like, I just want to lose 20 pounds in X amount of weeks. And I'll sit there and explain to them like, hey, this is not very sustainable. And you can do that. Absolutely. But if you want to change your life and you want to keep those 20 pounds off and you want to grow and you want to have muscles and all of this stuff, then then it's going to take a little bit of investment on yourself. And I think of the things like we invest in our houses, we invest in our cars. Um, I mean, you get an oil change literally every three months. Like, you have to or else your car won't run or you have to put gas in it or it won't run. And just think of your body like that. It's like just invest a little bit into your body and, and it will repay you. Like it's it's insane. I can't even explain it, but I think I'm a walking testament to it because I would two years ago, I would have sat here and been like, I will never be X, Y, and Z. But now I look at myself and I'm like, I am X, Y, and Z and a little bit more. So that's and A, B, and C. <laughs> right. All of the above. Yeah. But I know that from a consumer perspective um, or potential client perspective, it's very daunting, mm -hmm. um, especially if it's like, 
I have so much to accomplish and I'm just not going to accomplish. And even Mackenzie saying like, I'll never be X, Y, and Z. And I, I look back at like five years ago when I started my fitness Instagram and I would have never thought that I was going to be here yeah. whatsoever. So that's the cool part about life. Um, but it's also something that you don't need to accomplish everything first out the gate. Yeah. Um, and like Mackenzie was talking about what an investment is for your body. And I was doing some math and that's why when she asked me a question, it took me a second to answer. Cause I was thinking about like on a day to day commitment, I took my rates, um, for six months and divided it by how many days. And it's like 10 or $11 per day. Yeah. And if you're really thinking about like what you spend money for eating out or going out for drinks or buying coffee or like anything, I mean, budgeting $10 Mm -hmm. per day is pretty doable. And so being able to look at that and look at that full picture and think like, man, am I willing to invest in my health for $10 a day? Yeah, I've bought in products way back before I knew anything about fitness that were much more than $10 a day that had claims of fixing everything. And and that's the thing of Mackenzie talking about, this is the body that you have for the rest of forever. And that's what I always try to come back to when clients say, I want to do this. I want to do this. It's like, all right, but what about life? What about being able to, um, if you choose to have kids or if you want to have kids, having a body that's hormonally sound and able to have kids and then being able to take care of those kids with that body, um, being able to show up for yourself. I mean, thinking back to when you were eating the chicken and peppers for every meal and doing hours of cardio, how bad was your sleep? How bad did you feel every day? How bad was your digestion? And now on a day-to-day basis of you just feeling so much better, it's like, it's daunting. Like I said, to be like, I'll never get there. Or Mm -hmm. I feel like I have to relearn. And for me, I get into like, well, that's going to take six months. And like, uh, that seems like a lot of work, but the time's going to pass anyways. And so being able to invest in yourself and know that you're doing what's right, because I spun my wheels for so many years trying to achieve what I've achieved now. And if I would have just stopped looking for the quick fix and invested in myself, and again, the financial part, we understand it. And Mackenzie is a prime, I mean, I'm a prime example. The first coach that I hired, I spent every cent that I had. I was flat broke after I paid for my coach. And the only way I was able to pay for my coach is I had a city government job um, all through high school as a lifeguard and that was city government. And so I got a like retirement and it was like a thousand dollars and I had like 38 cents in my bank account and the thousand dollars deposited. And then I sent like right to a coach and I was like, guess I got to follow things now because yeah. I have no money. Yeah. Um, so the financial side we get, we're not saying like, oh, pish posh, don't worry about finances. It's being able to look at the bigger theme with that. And with investing in yourself, not only investing in yourself on a day-to-day basis, but investing that financially and being able to show up. And I just think of it like I will never put a price on my health. Um, like I go to the doctor for a reason. Um, and I just remember, like you said, I paid my coach and I'd be like, all right, $100 for the rest of the week. Now what do we do? <laughs> um, but I was lucky enough to live at home and have my dad who was very helpful with me. But that also included like my gym membership and stuff like that. But at the same time, we're in a time where gym memberships are expensive, but they're not like out of this world. Mm-hmm. Um, there's options. So that's really nice to have as well. And then just automatically assuming that you're going to get these results because you hired a coach is also a misconception. It's like, okay, you hired the coach. That's the first step. And now comes your work. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think that I never really realized until I started working with Alex was that I have to do this work. He can tell me as many times to do, you know, X, Y, and Z, but if I don't do it, then I'm not going to see results. Mm -hmm. And that's the best thing that I've ever done for me as a, as a client in general, and just never put limitations on what I could achieve. Mm -hmm. So she hasn't, and she's, (laughs) um, exceeded everything that she originally thought she could do. So, um, then we'll go ahead and dive into corporate America, what it was like working a a nine to five while also reaching your fitness goals. Was it possible? Yeah. (laughs) 1000% it was. And, and so for most of you that don't know, I worked in a nursing home first and those hours were 11 AM to 7 PM. So my option was go to the gym at seven 30 or eight, or go to the gym in the morning. And so what I would do is I woke up at 4.30 in the morning, every morning, worked out from five to like 
six thirty or so. Um, and then I would eat breakfast, take a nap and go to work. Um, and, and so when I would, I would pack my meals, um, I would have like two meals at work and then I would come home, have dinner and then go to bed and repeat Monday through Friday. Um, and packing my meals at work was always something that at first very much bothered me because that's not the norm. Mm -hmm. And people would be like, what are you doing? Why are you eating that? What does that do for you? Um, so I will tell you that if you begin to pack your meals, just be prepared to answer the questions. You can answer them nicely. You can answer them not at all. It's up to you. Um, but like I said, I like to help people. So I would kind of explain like, you can eat bread and you can eat carbs and they're not bad for you. And I would just cut out soda or, you know, whatever, just little things to help my coworkers. And some of them like, were like, Oh, you're right. Like this is, I've one, I remember one vividly was like, I haven't had a Coke in 11 days. And I was like, see, that's the thing. I was like, how do you feel? And she was like much better. And so little things like that, but it's just scheduling yourself and understanding that. Yes. It, it would be easier if you didn't have to work the nine to five, but Hey, you're at the nine to five. It's paying your bills. So what you can do in that time, if that's getting up and walking for 10 minutes every hour, or if that's um, like literally getting up and walking, going to the bathroom, whatever it may be, taking the stairs, little things like that just add up. And I know it's very difficult and people just don't understand because you have work parties and you have, you know, outings and all of that. And we had outings and work parties all the time. Um, but I, I was just like, no, it's okay. I will have my own meals. Um, I'll be fine. I'll just gra grab a Diet Coke or some water or something like that, or I would bring my meal with me. And it's not always the most comfortable. Uh, but as you continue to go through your journey, it gets a little bit easier because people are just like, oh, like I expected. Yeah. And Mackenzie's just going to have her Tupperware. Yeah, exactly. She's going to have her water bottle with her. <laughs> and that's exactly it. And people would just like ask me questions. And, and the reason that people ask questions is because they want to do it, mm -hmm. but they just don't know where to start. And that's how being an advocate for just like a healthier lifestyle and just being educated about why you're doing what you're doing can help so many people that you don't really know. Yeah, it was super powerful for me. I worked, um, I waitressed uh, during preps and then outside of preps, but while I was living that fit life. Um, and then I also worked at a TV station and a radio station and a few other jobs along the way, as well as being a student during those times. And so I had a very jam packed schedule. And like Mackenzie said, there were tons of questions. And even sometimes it felt so overwhelming because I was like, just let me eat my freaking yeah. food in peace. But like Mackenzie said, people just want to know. And it was so powerful for me because I live in kind of like my own little bubble in regards to now that I've been in fitness for the amount of time I have, now that my job is fitness, I am surrounded by like-minded people. I forget what those questions sound like. And then I go to like a holiday or a group event and I'm like, oh, <laughs> people really don't know. Yeah. And it's even something like when I'm making Instagram posts or talking on my story or even on this podcast where it's like, oh, that's common knowledge. Like, I don't need to talk mm -hmm. about that. It really is not. And mm -hmm. I talked about this in one of the episodes talking about um, how to not get lost in the online space and realizing there are oodles and oodles of people to help and being able to go to my job and people being like, oh, you can eat carbs, you can eat rice, you can have that. Yeah. I'd be like, yeah, you can and more. Um, so I was the own little walking billboard of just being like, you can do it. Yeah. Uh, and it was fun in that regard after I got over the overwhelming sense that I didn't have to tell everyone everything. Yeah. Um, but the biggest thing was not making a big deal about it. Mm -hmm. um, like she was talking about, of it's not the norm, but you don't have to go by society standards. And that was the oddest thing for me was going against the grain because I was someone who wanted to blend in so much because I was so afraid of sticking out that sticking out was uncomfortable for me starting off and explaining myself was uncomfortable. And it was easier to go with the flow than explain myself. But then I hit a, a stopping point where I was like, so I'm going with the flow just to ease the discomfort of explaining myself or going against the flow instead of living the life that's going to make me feel the most fulfilled and healthy. Yeah. And then I was like, like <laughs> my like, mind blown, light switch, light bulb, whatever it was, where I was like, oh my gosh, I'm living so small 
because it's so much more comfortable. And that was the point where I was like, I am not going to live small anymore. I'm not going to make other people comfortable. And I vividly remember I prepped while I was in college and I went out while I was prepping and I would just stand there with a red solo cup filled with water. And as long as you don't make a big deal, like, Uh, I'm sitting here drinking water and I'm, I'm not drinking tonight, guys. And pointing it out half the time, people would think that I was drunk too, because I was just having a good time. And then they'll be like, can I get you another drink? And I'm like, it's just water. Like you can can pay for another water. Sure. It's free, but thank you for the gesture. So it's something that your mentality towards it and how you go about it is so, so powerful. And it was even something with ordering from restaurants. I used to feel so uncomfortable asking for things to be different in a restaurant. And I would just feel like, I'm just going to eat it as is, even though like, I know it's not going to make me feel my best or whatever it may be. But being able to really take that step back and realize what an investment in yourself it is um, and what that looks like over the long haul. And I remember while Mackenzie was prepping for a competition and she was working a nine to five, she also, luckily her job had like a treadmill ring yeah. like somewhere. And so she got to do her cardio on her lunch break. I used to pack tennis shoes and I would like, during a break, I would just like go for walks just yeah. to like get movement in, um, which was ridiculous, but um, do what you got to do. Yeah. And she was talking about everything within her coworkers, what they were asking, how they were so intrigued by bikini competitions mm-hmm. and all of that. But it was something that was really cool. Cause she even right before her show, she had to go out of town for an event of some sort. Or a conference. Yeah. Yeah. And Jersey. she was like, do you have a lunchbox I can use? I have to like go and like, it was like two weeks before her show. She was like, I got to stay on track and we got to be at yeah. this conference and X, Y, and Z. Um, and she's, she still made it happen. Yeah. That was one of the things that kind of just stuck with me is like, there's always going to be something, but the more that I put my goals first and, and I just have to take that time to one, pack my stuff and two, just prepare and be prepared for everything, but also not freak out when things weren't in my control. And that trip to New Jersey was, I think, four days long. And so I packed food um, for four days and our flight, the last night we were there, got canceled. And I was like, oh my gosh, I don't have food for tomorrow. I, I'm i supposed to be home, like all this different stuff. And I was like, you know what, pivot and you know, we're going to do this thing. Um, And we ended up getting a flight home, but it was just these little things. Like if you're on vacation or if you're on a work trip, like most hotels have a gym. Most like I was lucky enough that my coworker rented a car and I was like, I'll watch the bachelorette with you as long as you take me (laughs) to the gym. And so that was our deal. Like she took me to the gym and I was only there for an hour. Like I didn't need, you know, two or three hours. I was like, let me get my lift in, come pick me up. We'll be fine. Mm -hmm. Um, but little things like packing your food, taking walks. Um, Sue, mentioned, Sue mentioned my prep, and luckily my corporate job did have a gym in the basement, and most corporate jobs do offer some type of fitness stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and so at my, at my lunch break, I would literally bring a change of clothes, go do cardio, change back in, and just kind of take like a quick body shower and then be right back for lunch or be right back to work. And then I would you know, get off and then go do my lift afterwards. Um, I could have done it, you know, differently, but it would just work that way. And it was just something that after prep, I was like, that movement in the middle of the day really helped me. So then I started going on walks outside and then I would like got my coworkers. I'm like, does anyone want to go for a walk? And just little things like that to be the leader and to be, you know, just the one that inspires movement and just a healthier lifestyle within the corporate setting can be huge for people. Yeah. So why don't you go ahead and say your top five to 10 tips for sticking to your goals and prep or outside of prep. So I don't think that this is in a vacuum that like doing the balance thing is yeah. not possible. Like you can do it whether you're in prep or not. You don't need to have this overarching goal to be like, I have to do it for this because I worked in a a job setting and she worked in a job setting where like we did it even while we weren't in prep and being able to find that balance, if you want to use that word of what it looks like to incorporate that. So why don't you give your first um, five to 10 tips? I know you said one of them is just kind of planning ahead and that's a huge one. Yeah. So my first one's just going to be priorities. Like what decide every single day, what's important to you, Um, whether that's your meals that day or whether it's a lunch that they're catering in, like that's your choice and no one has to live with that choice, but you. So just know that going into it. 
Um, secondly, just if, if you do plan your, your day and you want to pack your meals, I sometimes would pack them the night before. And that way I can just grab and go. So if you don't pack them before, then you wake up 30 minutes earlier and you pack them. It's not like this huge thing to where you have to have this extravagant meal to fit your goals. Um, my third one would just be getting up and walking as much as you possibly can. Being sedentary at a desk job is one, very not fun. And two, it just hurts your butt a lot. So <laughs> I would literally like get up and go to the bathroom like two or three times an hour, even if I didn't have to go to the bathroom. I do because I drink a lot of water, but um, I would just make sure I would, I would get up at least like if you have an Apple watch that reminds you to stand every hour. So if I happen to not be standing, I would literally get up and go walk up and down our stairs a couple of times and then just come sit back down. And just people don't realize that small steps like that just add up to your daily need. Um, and then my fourth one, I think I'm on number four would be water, like just have your water with you. And I know it's not the most fun. Um, flavor your water if you don't like water. I have a lot of clients that are like, I just can't with water. And I'm like, <laughs> flavor it. It's fine. Like put a lemon in it, whatnot. Um, and then fifth one would just be doing your own thing. Like don't allow people to persuade you. Don't allow people to make you feel bad about the choices that you're, you're, ha- you're making. And I, I say that because at one point I was like, maybe I am just a little bit weird. Like maybe <laughs> this is just kind of, and I am weird. I will. Uh, yeah. <laughs> don't let her the you on that. I'm very weird, but um, maybe I'm just odd at this point. And then I got to noticing like, no, people just want to do this. Everyone wants to have their dream body. Like, mm-hmm. duh. Um, <laughs> if it, and that's why I always tell people, if it were easy, everyone would be doing it. And, and that there's nothing easy and, that, and nothing makes Sue and I special for sticking to our plan. It's just, those are our priorities. And it's like anything else. If you're saving money, that's your priority and you're good at it. So mm-hmm. once you do that, then everything starts to fall into place. And that's something that I looked up to Sue for for so long, especially moving into the reverse portion of my bikini prep, because that is the most important, in my opinion. I was like, I'm going to do this right because I've seen Sue walk the walk and talk the talk. And I know that if I do it, then I'm going to be, I'm going to be fine. And literally what 13 months later I'm so happy that I made that decision. Um, but it wasn't easy and I wasn't perfect every day. I had my plenty of breakdowns. Believe me, it's never that easy. And people will look at at people like Sue and I and just be like, you have everything figured out as far as nutrition goes. But I can tell you, both of us are like, dang, I wish I could have, you know, X, Y, and Z. And we just know that at that point, it just doesn't align with our goals. So we don't do it. Mm -hmm. Um, But there is a time and place for that. And I know I just had my birthday, like I said, um, on Monday, and I really wanted hibachi. And I was like, I just want hibachi so bad. I probably haven't had hibachi in like years. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to get it. And so we went and got hibachi. It was fine. Next day, we're good. Um, But as far as corporate goes, like, just keep your goals in mind. Um, Just do everything that you can do to make yourself prepared. And that's with anything in life. And that's with any situation. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be very, very difficult. But the moment that you do it for, you know, a week, two weeks, you're like, okay, I got this. Like, I got the hang of this. I'm good. I love this life, you know, whatever. And then you, from there, you just flourish into your own. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to give just a few more tips as far as corporate life. One thing that I did was I would bring a gallon of water and whether I filled it up at the, at my job or filled it up beforehand, I would always have like the whole gallon and I would leave it under my desk because um, first I don't like drinking out of a gallon. That's just like tedious. Like I'm like sitting there with the whole (laughs) whole gallon (laughs) as I'm chugging it. So I would always have my hydro flask um, or any water bottle that you want to use. And I would drink out of it and then just take the gallon to refill it. So um, because we didn't have like an easily accessible water water fountain, like where I was working personally, I know some jobs definitely do, or it wasn't easy to like fill my water back up. Or I'm someone that if I get into a routine of working, like if I'm working, I'm working. And it's very hard for me to like stop that and be like, I'm going to go fill up my water bottle. So that was one thing that was so, so helpful for me. And then in my car, I always either had some sort of gym equipment or a change of clothes. It was so much easier for me personally. This might not be the case for you, but I'm just giving some advice to go straight after work. Because if I got home and I sat down, 
my butt was not getting back up because after a long day and just being exhausted and it's like, I can't wait to be home. Once I got home, getting back out was so difficult. So I always had clothes in my car. So if I did make the decision to go directly after, maybe I didn't originally plan to it and then I buckled up and went, I would have some gym equipment um, or like my clothes in my car to be able to change a spare pair of shoes, all that jazz. Um, And then I also in my car or at your desk, if you have the ability, Availability, I recommend having non-perishable items that you can have for food. So having like rice cakes, tuna packets, um, having like, uh, I'm blanking I on other non-perishable. Condiments. I said condiments. Yeah. I was like hot sauce. People would literally open my drawer and I have like a huge thing of rice sauce. Hot sauce. <laughs> and they're like, okay, you must like it. But I also had forks and spoons and little things like that. It's just like a quick snack, protein bars, anything that you can grab that you're like, I'm kind of hungry, mm-hmm. but I don't want to have like a full meal. Like they yeah. have something. Trail mix, protein yeah. powder, protein bars. Um, I mean, the list could go on some turkey jerky, some beef jerky, whatever it may be. So I had like a whole drawer stashed of that. So it wasn't something that I had to pack each day because I was becoming like a crazy bag lady at one point during prep where I had like my school backpack, my work bag, and then my gym bag, and then my food. And it would be like carrying all these yeah. things. And so anything that you could keep, we had a community fridge. So I would keep like some condiments in there. I would keep some stuff in my desk drawer, some stuff in my car. So if I was ever in a pinch, I didn't have to default to falling off plan. I had a backup plan. And if sometimes a backup plan didn't hold up, then I could, of course, make changes as needed. But having the gallon of water, having things on hand, having things in my car for going to the gym was extremely helpful. And then planning. And I'm just going to reiterate that because it is so important. Um, Any day that I went without a plan was a day that I was like mentally not all there. And that's still the case for me. I'm someone who votes off of plans. I want structure to my day. And so being able to know, okay, it takes this long to go and do this. I'm going to have this meal ready. Um, and most of the time I bring an extra meal just in case, cause I'd rather have it if I need it. And if I don't, then great. It just goes into either stays in the um, community fridge for the next day, or I take it home and eat it later. Um, but I mean, being prepared and having a plan was an absolute game changer for me. Um, and then like McKinley said, just having movement throughout the day. So I would be like, anyone want to walk to go get lunch or I'll walk. I would like walk to lunch places with people and then bring my own lunch. Like I have no shame in that game. Um, and, and you would be surprised how much people actually want to walk, but they won't walk by themselves. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I was always like, anyone want to go for a walk? And people were like, I'm so glad you asked. Yeah, I wanted to, but nobody wanted to go with me. I'm like, yeah, just ask me. I always want to walk. So, <laughs> um, Well, great. I think we've really touched on some great topics here of going over corporate life as well as investing in yourself and you guys getting to know McKinsey a little bit more. But I am going to open the floor for first McKinsey to say any other, say five fun facts about yourself. Oh, um, I'm putting you on the spot and then tell people where they can find you um, for social media handles. Yeah. Okay. So my... Five facts. Oh, gosh. Well, for one thing that nobody really knows is my first, my real name is Maria. Um, don't call me that because I <laughs> am not used to it, but that is my legal first name. I go by my middle name. So there you go. That's something um, that people don't really know. And, and some, even if they do know, they forget because some people will, like my sister calls me Maria sometimes and everyone's like, who the heck are you talking about? <laughs> um, but uh Another fact, I am a four-time All-American. So like I said, I played volleyball. Yeah. Um, We ended up winning the national championship undefeated, which was very cool, (laughs) might I add. Um, So one of my proudest moments. But yeah, I'm very competitive. And you'll you'll know that if you play sports with me, I don't really have an off button with that. And I feel bad sometimes, but it is what it is. Yeah, not really. It, and game nights as well. They get pretty heated around here, I would say. Oh, but, yeah. Um, another fact, I don't even know. You have a dog. Oh, yeah. I have a dog named King. He's perfect. And he's a pit bull. And he is the most loving, caring little dog you'll ever meet. And he's just has zero um, clue how much he actually weighs. So yeah. it's very nice. I have lots of bruises from him just bumping into me. Um, another one is... Let's see. 
What is more? I don't oh, gosh, know. now I have to think of I your know. fun facts for you. No. Um, she is allergic to uh, tree nuts. Oh, yeah. I'm allergic. Yeah, which is so weird because I used to eat pecans all the time. And then one day I had an allergic reaction. My mom was like, you should not eat those things. And sometimes she still eats things she's allergic to. And she'll be like, my throat doesn't feel good. What's going on? I was like, well, you just ate something you're allergic to. So that makes yeah, sense. I'm one of those. But, um, the last fun fact would be that I just thoroughly enjoy dancing, but I'm like not great at it, <laughs> which is horrible to say. I have rhythm sometimes. Brandon would probably disagree, but sometimes I do have rhythm. Um, but I really am trying to get myself out there to take a dance class, but I'm too scared. So if I'll you want to take one, one. yeah, as I say, if anyone wants to take one, come on. Yeah. I mean, I'll host it actually. <laughs> That'll be a treat for everyone yeah. involved. Um, then go ahead and say where we can find you on social and then also say kind of what you, um, as a client, what's your favorite part of being a coach so that you can really speak to your ideal client on here? Yeah. So I'll, I'll start with you. My favorite part of being a coach in general is just hearing a mindset change. So I am more so focused on your mentality towards, you know, anything, your goals, food, the gym, um, how we're viewing ourselves in our own light. Um, and I, I, my clients will tell you now that I'm your biggest cheerleader, but I also know when to slap you on the wrist if you need it. Um, I'm really good at being just communicating with my clients um, and, and how they they respond. Um, I like to know what they respond to. So some I can be a little bit harder on while others I need to pull back a little bit. And I always like to create a safe space. So anything that I open my floor up to the, my clients, anything they want to tell me, sometimes they're like TMI. I'm like, literally nothing's TMI around here. We're good. Um, um, but I will say that just, a, just as a client, just being honest and open and just ready for change and willing to learn. And I know that you're bombarded with a lot of stuff, like a lot of advertisements, a lot of this is better than that. You shouldn't do this. You should do that. But finding your thing is what's going to make you successful. And that's what I'm here for. I'm here to help you find what makes you the best person that you can be and adds to your life. I do not want fitness or nutrition or anything like that to take away from your life. I want it to add to your life. And that's something that I say often in check-ins is if it's not adding to your life, then it needs to go. And, and, And we need to find a way that it can add to your life if it's something that you're very passionate about. And I think that you know, finding that for everyone is very, very different. But I love that journey. And I love just seeing the realization, like, I am strong. I am, I freaking have done this. I, you know, two weeks ago, I wouldn't have done this, um, X, Y, and Z. And just seeing those things in, in check-ins is just uh, the light in my day. I can see a physical transformation all day long, but I want to know what's on the inside of you. And I want to know how your mind is and your mentality. Because if you looked at my prep transformation, it was really impressive. But I will tell you that I was not my best self because I was just not, you know, like I'm dieting, like I don't have the proper nutrition as far as my brain goes. Um, and I, I was tired all the time. I want to be happy. I want to fill my cup up and I want to fill others up too. And, and, and having those impressive transformations are fantastic. But my mentality from then to now is something that I'm way more proud of. I swear my brain has grown like three sizes. So <laughs> if I could show you that I would. Yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, that's what I, you know, my favorite thing as a coach is just is is changing lives and, and making people realize their true potential. Um, but you can find me on social and it's at McKinsey Montano. So my name is spelled M-A-K and my last name is M-O-N-T-A-N-O. So Montano, not Montana. People get that confused. Yes, we'll have it in the show yeah. notes as well. So yeah. it's not confusing. Yeah. yeah, but you can find me there. And I'm sure I'm. you'll find me from the PD page as well. So phys- at physique development, is it underscore? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So check them out too. If you're not following already, you probably should. And I literally say it till I'm blue in the face, but I am so thankful for physique development and the community that they have provided me. And I can't wait to pour back into it because it is going to be a fun ride. Wow. So (laughs) excited. And like she said, as far as um, the physical and the mental transformation, physical transformations are sometimes temporary, but those mental transformations, that's like sustainable and long-term and that's 
like why it's so yeah. exciting because you can have someone lose weight and then like not really change. And then you can have someone like change mentally and maybe you don't see it externally at first. Mm-hmm. And then you see it down the road, which is super cool. Yeah. So you can also email her McKenzie at physique development.com. I'll have everything in the show notes, but thank you so much for joining us, McKenzie. And we are so excited to have you on board and on staff. Thank you. I can't wait to get started. I'm excited and we have a lot coming to you. So stay tuned.